Hello and welcome to 5 Year Club video number 79. I'm gonna have to do this really fast because I just did it and I wasn't recording. And that's always very embarrassing when that happens. Today I'm going to focus on cars. I've said some of this information before but I think it's worthwhile to say it again so that you can help your friends deal with their car issues if you don't have them or you can help yourself. Cars are great especially because they will drive us to jobs that pay us more than what we can walk to. However, while we're building net worth, Cars have an incredible opportunity cost. For example, if we look at the S&P 500's performance for the last 30 years, right, and we say we take a $15,000 car, and this is the performance adjusted for inflation. So age 22, 30 years ago we buy a $15,000 car, and um, then we see 30 years later what would it be worth in 2018? What would that $15,000 be worth? It would be worth $136,000. So that was a very expensive car. And uh, we want that $136,000 for retirement, for charitable giving, for a vacation home, for something better than just a car. Therefore, we do not want to spend $15,000 on a car. We want to spend less. And the two biggest rules I want to impart to you from this video are buy your cars with cash, no car payment ever, and buy used cars because new cars depreciate very rapidly. I would also suggest that you reach financial independence before you spend significant money on a car. There are different definitions of significant money. Dave Ramsey's definition is add up all the stuff that you own with a motor in it and it should be less than half your in annual income or you have too much money tied up in things that are going down in value. I think that's too much. Financial Samurai thinks that's too much. Um, I would not go above $10,000 for a car uh, before you reach financial independence in any case. And I personally would encourage something closer to the $5,000 range. Try to get a used Honda or, or Toyota a Civic or an Accord or a Camry or a Corolla, less than 100,000 miles and $5,000 or less. All right, let's talk about fixing car problems now. And the first thing I want to cover is leasing. And specifically with leasing, I want to address the issue of electric cars because California has had a generous subsidy for leasing electric cars. I took the example from an excellent Mr. Money Mustache blog post on the Nissan Leaf. This commenter writes, the total cost if I end up purchasing after the lease, blah, 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 $13,179 out of pocket. And I want you to see here that yes, because of the subsidies, he paid $13,000 instead of $18,679, but he still paid $13,000 for this car. And according to the S&P 500 calculation, Accounting for inflation, that's $107,000 he spent for this electric car. Electric car, electric cars have batteries that die after like seven years. So if we divide $107,000 over seven years, we're going to get about $1,273 a month. That's what it's costing him to own and operate this electric car, ignoring the cost of electricity, ignoring maintenance costs. And that's like the size of a mortgage. So, yep, it's way too much. Even if you got a discount from an even bigger mistake. Okay, if you have a lease, here are the ways you can get out of it. The best way is to transfer the lease to someone else. So you're going to have to look at your lease terms, look at the laws in your state, and, you know, Google how to transfer lease California car, and find someone who would like to take over that lease. That's the best way to get out of the lease. It's the cleanest way to get out of the lease. Or you could sell the vehicle so that you have enough money to pay the buyout amount on the vehicle. It's possible you, mean, you may need to pay some taxes on this, depending on your numbers, depending upon your state laws. Some states have an exemption where if you buy and sell the car within 10 days, there is no tax consequence. So those are the good ways to get out of a lease. The bad ways to get out of a lease are to pay the termination fee. It's generally so much money that it is not really worth it to get out of the lease that way. You can also simply finish out the lease, but don't buy the car. Now typically I think the 
price you're going to pay for this car after lease ends is not going to be in Lewis's recommended five to ten thousand range anyway. So yeah, not a big deal. Just return the car. You know, save up some money before then. Bike for a while, save up some money after then, and buy a car with cash. Final thing that's possible is you can default on the lease payment. I do not recommend defaulting on the lease payment because it will d destroy your credit score. Not that I care that much about credit scores, but I do not intentionally do things uh, that I know will nuke the credit score. I mean, it's bad if you like went for a landlord rental and they saw you defaulting on the lease payments. Doesn't bode well for your tenant ship. And uh, they could also sue you for the amount that you defaulted on the lease. And I don't encourage people to do things that make it possible for them to be sued. However, if you have some kind of horrible medical thing where you are stuck in the hospital and you need to pay for food or, you know, just some basic staying alive stuff, then if you don't make that lease payment, that makes a lot of sense to me. So it is here. You should not give up food money to pay a car lease. That would be really dumb. Okay, and the final scenario that you might want to get out of is a car payment that is too big. If you bought a twenty or thirty thousand dollar car and you no longer want to make payments on that twenty or thirty thousand dollar debt because you have a better use for the money, like paying off student loans, or uh, investing for retirement, or creating an emergency fund then yeah, we're gonna get out of that car payment. Cars depreciate, so it's very likely you are upside down on that loan. Let's just take a scenario where you owe $30,000 $30, on the loan and the car is worth 25,000. To transfer the title to the new owner, you will need to get the 25,000 from the new owner, the 5,000 from yourself, pay off the $30,000 balance, then you can transfer the title. So you'll need to come up with $5,000 of money to do that. If you cannot come up with $5,000, you may be able to get a loan from a local bank to help you cover the difference. Any strategy there might be something like this. You get a $7,000 loan from the local bank. You use 5,000 of that 7,000 paired with the $25,000 sales price of your vehicle to pay off the $30,000 loan and transfer the title. With the remaining $2,000 from your $7,000 local loan, personal loan, you would buy a Beater, a 1980s Civic, one of the most beautiful cars ever created. And now you can still make it to that higher paying job in your beautiful $2,000 Civic, and you no longer have to make payments on $30,000. Instead, you are making payments on $7,000. That is put into your debt snowball. And you have more cash flow freed up to tackle your problems. You're going to pay less interest. Hoorah. And let's review the biggest rules from today once more. Please buy your cars with cash. Never have any kind of car payment. Never lease a car. And buy used because you don't want to suffer the depreciation that new vehicles fast. Lewis strongly recommends that you reach financial independence before you spend significant money on a car. And you know, if I had a net worth rule for cars, it would probably be like less than 2% of your net worth in a car. I think that's reasonable. Get a used Honda or Toyota with less than 100,000 miles. I love, I put a dollar sign in that, I'm tired and pay less than $5,000 for that car while you are building net worth. We want beautiful cars that we spend $5,000 or less on. Okay, that's it for 5-Year Club video number 79. I hope this discussion helps you um, help a friend with their car problems or helps you in the future with your car problems or simply helps you understand how cars fit um, into financial independence. Have a fabulous evening.